What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Fact and Stat. This is now episode 104. And as you see on the screen, I have two guests here with me. I'm allowed to introduce yourself. Before we get into that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate all the support across all platforms. And also, I do make my own Facts and Stats apparel. Uh, feel free to check out the website, factsandstats.us. I'm going to allow Stephanie to introduce herself, and we're going to go ahead and get started at the code. Um, hey everyone, uh, my name is Stephanie Guion, um, current pro basketball player, uh, former college basketball player, um, and former player at Largo High School located here, right here in PG County. Um, Kenneth? Hey, yeah, this is Ron Larry Barr, my name is Kenneth Pope. Uh, I spent two years ago, I went to Flowers, I uh, played the ball there, I uh, came to Morgan. I did my thing here, and I just decided to stay here and work here. Uh, Definitely a big shout out to the area. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and, and Cole, or Ken, I'm sorry, Ken, you got to talk about this a little bit more, but I echo everything that you just said. Um, you went to Flowers, you went to Morgan, you decided to stay in Morgan and, and, and work in the Baltimore area. Uh, I'm a Ravens fan. My hospital is in Baltimore, John Hopkins Hospital. So I love Baltimore personally. Uh, and, you know, big shout out to the DMV area. You know, ain't nothing better than the DMV, if you ask me. Um, couple of things we're going to talk about today. I think the biggest thing right now, it's a couple of big things going on. You got the way that, to some, Caitlin Clark is being pushed around and teammates not standing up for her and X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, her having a target on her back. And on the other side, you have the NBA Finals where Kyrie Irving is back playing against his former team, same for Porzingis. I expect him to return and play game one. Um, so we're going to talk about the NBA Finals preview. And then after that, we're going to get into the WNBA season so far which just started, and also the Commissioner Cup started yesterday uh, with the Liberty won that last year, so we want to see how that pans out today. There's actually a game on right now, but we're going to start with the NBA Finals side first. Uh, Kenneth, I'm actually going to circle back to you, man. Uh, the Mavs, they beat three straight 50-win teams. The Celtics pretty much, you can say, coasted to the finals. A lot of injuries on the Eastern Conference side. I don't think anybody expected it to happen, and even if these guys were healthy, I'm not saying they could have took down the Celtics, but it probably would have been a tougher challenge. But Jimmy Butler, uh, Dame slash Giannis, um, Randall, Bojan, OG, Josh Hart. I mean, I mean, Embiid wasn't fully healthy. You know, it can go on and on and on. But the NBA Finals is here. Kenneth, and I'm just curious to hear your thoughts on it. Um, I can't say you probably expected this. I don't know if you did. But coming into the playoffs, did you expect this Finals matchup? And how are you feeling about this Finals matchup? Oh. Um. I didn't expect this matchup to be what it was, for sure. I definitely had either OKC coming out or the Nuggets coming out. Um, but I didn't have, like, that. Um, but to what they've done thus far this season has been definitely uh, impressive. Um, it's not to say that, you know, we wouldn't expect it with Kyrie and Luka as the backfield that they are. Um, but I think Boston had a cakewalk to the final, and now they're about to meet their match. I mean, they're going to put a lot of pressure, pressure. The match is a lot of pressure on Boston. Different matchups, um, different X factors in this series. You want to be able to be exploited matchups. Um, and then with the injury with Porzingis coming back, how are they going to re incorporate him back into the, the starting lineup, incorporate him back into the, uh, the flow of things, actually get him going? So it'll be interesting to see um, how they go. I got it going in seven. Um, definitely got it going in seven, seven games uh, with the match missing off of game seven. Um, I definitely want to see Kyrie hold that trophy up in Boston. I'm um, as well as Zane. Okay. I like that. Um, I'm going to respond to a couple of things that you said in a second. Let me hear Stephanie's thoughts first. Um, coming into the playoffs, did you expect this finals matchup? Uh, if not, who did you have going to the finals and how are you feeling about it so far now? Oh, for me. Um, I did expect this matchup. I think after seeing, again, how injuries were riddled in the East, and even even without the injuries, the Celtics proved to be one of the best teams in the NBA all season. They've been playing well all season, so to kind of see them kind of coast through these playoffs um, and coast to the East Conference Championship and now to the finals, um, it's really not a surprise. I mean, if you look at um, what Jason Tatum has been doing, what Jalen Brown has been doing, the addition of Drew Holiday, to me it's really not a big surprise that we have the Celtics coming out of the East. I think the West is where we saw a lot of teams that could have been in this position that the Mavs are in now. But I think the Mavs have proven to have the best duo in Kyrie and Luka. I think they've proven 
especially in this last series with the way Kyrie has been showing out. I think they've proven to be the best duo, and everybody else on the team has been excelling in their roles and excelling in what they need to do. Um, so I think the West was definitely a more loaded conference, but night in and night out, each different series, the Mavs have just proved it again and again behind the stellar play of Luka and Kyrie. Yeah, uh, one, wow, thank y'all. Um, y'all got me feeling good. I'm glad y'all with me today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I came into this season Celtics Nuggets. I'm a Heat fan, but I came into this season Celtics Nuggets just off the respect of, you know, who they are as a team and all their additions, Drew Holiday, Porzingis. Whenever you add guys like that to phenomenal players already and Jalen Brown and Justin Tatum, you got to respect that. And as far as the West side, I did think the Nuggets were going to go back. Um, I I even picked the Suns to beat the Wolves. So I didn't expect the Wolves to handle the Suns the way they handled them. It didn't pretty much handle the Nuggets the way they handled them. Um, now, on the other side, though, as far as the Dallas Mavericks, I, I picked the Mavericks in three straight series. And everything to what Kenneth just said, I mean, and you. You know, you have a, to me as well, that's the best duo in NBA. I've been preaching that for like a year now. Um, you have the best duo in NBA. And then you have guys that excel in a role in Derrick Jones Jr., P.J. Washington, Josh Green when you get in minutes, Daniel Gafford, Pete, who they trade for at the deadline with P.J. Um, and then you hit on a first-round draft pick in, in, in Derrick Lively. So, um, man, I think we're in for a great series. I'm with Kenneth. I, 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 want, I want Dallas in six, uh, personally. I think they really can do it. We, we, we know how Boston has its ups and downs throughout this season. Granted, they're 12-2 in the playoffs. They had some close games with teams they probably shouldn't have had close games with, but they still won those games, whether that was the Pacers, whether that was against Cleveland. Um, wasn't really too many close games against Miami. Um, so really just speaking to the last two series. But, yeah, man, it's been it's been a phenomenal playoff so far, though. I'm going to ask y'all who y'all X-Factors in this series. And then, um, Steph, I didn't get your winner, though. Who do you have winning this series, by the way? Um, I have the Mavs winning. I have the Mavs winning this series. Um yeah, I have them winning in, I want to say, six games. Why? What made you, I think, what I think made if you... it goes to a game seven, then the Celtics have home court advantage, and they've been playing well in Boston. Um, so I think the Mavs need to get in six. What made you lean Mavs overall in this series, though? Um, I would really say the the play of Kyrie. Um, and you had just mentioned who are our X factors. To me, Kyrie is the X factor. Mm. Um, I think seeing his play in this in the previous playoff series with the Timberwolves, he showed us who he is. He showed us vintage Kyrie, Uncle Drew. He showed us that you know he's not old yet. He's not laying down. That he's here to stay. And I think when he set the tone, everyone else follows behind. We already know what we're going to get from Luca. We already know what we're going to get from our role players. We have Derek Lively coming in playing, giving us great minutes. We already know what we're gonna get. We're, we're gonna get from those guys, but when we have Kyrie starting off from tip off, hitting those shots, nobody could guard him. That's what we proved in the Timberwolves series. They almost swept him. So I really think that Kyrie is his X factor, and if he comes out swinging like he did in this previous series, I don't see the Celtics having an answer for him. Okay, I like that, um, Kenneth. I need to hear you. I, I heard. I heard you have Dallas and seven. Um, I love everything Stephanie just said. What's your reasoning on a little deeper level on why you continue to pick the Mavs to win this one? Um, I, I think while I agree Kyrie can be an X factor, um, I definitely think for those what I was saying that the X factor are the Mavs role players. And they show up consistently for four games and, and dominate and, and do just enough to seed in their position to help propel Luca and Kyrie. We know Luca's gonna go give you a triple double every night. We know Kyrie's gonna be missed the fourth quarter, miss the clutch shot. But then you get Daniel Gafford to hold the paint down and, and protect the paint. And you get Derek Lively to come in and, and get you your rebound that you need. And you get, you know what I'm saying? Like can you have your well, PJ Washington. A good fifteen for PJ is, is enough to give you over the hump against Boston who struggles late coming down in the fifth quarter. Whereas in the Mavericks Excel within the last two to three minutes, as we saw in the Timberwolves series. Uh, the Timberwolves was up, I think, by like six points. And the Mavs came back within the last two and a half minutes, and they beat them. And it's like, then, to your point, Stephanie, you know, Kyrie coming in. Green A. Luka showed us who he really is in this last game against the Mavs, I mean, against the Timberwolves, coming out for the 21st quarter point. Mm -hmm. um, so just having that in the game seven and, and the impact that, that would have, he just had that dog and he's hungry. Now going over to going over to 
the Celtic side of things, I mean, their X factor. I was talking earlier and I was saying for Zingas. The more I think about it as the day goes on, I'm, I'm trying to lean I'm trying to lean into Derek White. Um, and the reason why I'm saying Derek White is because well, so I'll say why I say for Zingas, um, because he hasn't played all, all all series. He hasn't played all playoffs. Um, and you want to see how it's helped is can he come in and be that real perspective, but also that stretch the floor and give you those other options to score when he's on the court. Um, I think right now they are struggling. Um, Boston, that is, they are struggling for third option when Jalen Brown might be off, when Jason Tatum might be off. Um, and he's trying to figure out is, is Derek White going to be that guy, but that's why I'm saying Derek White as an X factor because he's showing time and time again he can play defense just like Drew Holiday. Close enough, but not not Drew Holiday tight, but yeah. he up there with him. He's showing that he could be a guard that I can give you a good 17, 20 points and let y'all do y'all thing and y'all can split the 60 points that y'all need to do and we won. Um, and then you got Drew Holiday, he can, he can lock down with the or Kyrie, um, depending on whatever whatever matchup they want to go out go out there and throw at him. But like I said, it would be very interesting to see. Um, but that, those are my ex Okay. Okay. Um... For me, um, coming, I even it's funny because I had Boston to be as honest as possible, real quick. I had Boston beating Denver and or Minnesota if they met in the finals because on my mm. platform, shout out to the Facts and Stats Daily Sports Show. For anybody that's gonna watch this back, Daily Sports Show is held Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time um, on at Playback TV slash Facts and Stats, and on YouTube. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. But in my show, like when Mini beat Denver, a lot of people was like, "Oh yeah, it's it's Mini in Boston in the finals," and I'm like, "Whoa, like let's not overlook Dallas." Like, I mean, Dallas is still right there. Well, they just played a young OKC team, and then they played the Clippers without Kawhi Leonard. Like, I didn't really supposed to be here for real. Um, but me for this matchup now, um, I'm gonna stay with the hot guys. I'm gonna stay with Luca. That's my favorite player. Um, but if it was anybody else, I probably would pick Boston. My X factor is the big man. I think they go hand in hand. I think they work together. I think they work off of each other. Um, and I think Jason Kidd also subs them in and out at the right time um, as far as Gafford mm-hmm. and Lively. Um, Lively was just tremendous in the last series. Um, 60 for 60 and didn't even miss a shot. That's a record. And as far as the rim protection, both of those guys, I think one of them, I can't remember off the top of my head right now. My, my computer keeps freezing. But one of them had over 10 blocks in five games. I think it was 16 or 15 blocks only in five games played because um, it was a 4-1 series. And if Lively plays, it's probably 4-0 to be honest. Um, so I think that's my X factor for this series. I don't know the impact they're going to have against the Boston team because as far as rim protection standpoint, because Boston operates from a, like a five out setting um, and they have all their guys on the perimeter. You know, they have five different guys that can shoot the ball in the starting lineup. So um, how much is Lively and Gafford going to do? Um, but offensively though, they can still have that impact because I think the Boston would defend them how, as far as Luke and Kyrie with the ball, how many of it, all the other teams defend them this postseason. Um, you're going to see Lively and or Gafford have a lot of four and three opportunities when that's diving to the rim, um, finishing lobs, uh, kicking out to the corners to the right guys and things that like getting it back to Kyrie and Luke on dribble handoffs, resetting. Um, so they can still make their impact on the presence be felt in this series. And I'm roll with those guys because those guys don't play well. Um, they're probably not going to win this series. Typically, I probably would say PJ or DJJ. Um, as far as Boston side, I'm with Kenneth. Derek White is my X Factor. I personally can't stand him. Um, hell of a player, but, you know, when he plays against the Heat, he always steps up and excels, whether that's a, a late second three, a transition three, a block, uh, a game tie and put back, um, or game winning. Um, it just He does it all. And like Kenneth said, similar to Drew, but not Drew Holiday type level. So, um, man, we in for a fun series. Uh, let me ask y'all a question real quick. It's a, little, it's a little off topic, but we're still on the same topic. Where is Jason Tatum ranked for y'all as a player right now? Top what? In the league right now? Yeah, in the league right now. He's for sure a top 10 player in the league. I think he's for sure a top 10. I can maybe even argue top five. I can argue that. But I want, but I, I think whether or not they win this, the, the, the series and win the finals will be a major blow if he doesn't win this if he, if they don't pull it, pull this out that would be a major blow to his ranking but i definitely think he's a top 10 nba player right now top 10 for sure
Okay, so if he wins, he's top ten for sure. And you can for, sure, argue, yes. and for you, you can argue five. And if he wins this, you're stamping him five. Yes, right now. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, but cool. if he doesn't win this series, it would definitely make it would it would make me side eye the Celtics in general. But Jason Tatum would put more emphasis on him specifically. Obviously, you know he's the leader. He's the best one of the best players on the team. Um, so I would put more emphasis on him. But yes, this this finals is really it's. It's really a tipping point for me for the Celtics and again Jason Tatum. I mean, this is their second finals in three years. Um, so yeah, I I think this is a must win for him personally. I like it. Um who before I hear Kenneth, who would be your other four players though? If Tatum wins that championship this year, who are the other four players that's in your top five? Top five? Ooh. Definitely uh Jokic. Mm -hmm. I would I would put him in my top five. Um Shay. I, I I'm not gonna lie. I was a little disappointed in not seeing him win the MVP. I think he had a really tremendous season, and I think his team played well as well. Like I I I wanted to see him lift that MVP trophy. So I would put him in the top five category. Who else would be Jokic, Jason? Jokic, Shea, Tatum. We got two more. It's a tough one. Who else would I put? Luca. Okay, one more. Even even if even if even, I think even if Luca they didn't win this series, I think I would still keep Luca in the top five. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm not sure who I have at five. I gotta think about that last one, okay. but okay, okay, those top four for, 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 for sure, for sure. What about you, Kenneth? Where you got Tatum ranked? I got Tatum this season, or you speaking? Oh, just in general, that can general as a player. Um. I'll, I'll say based off of this season, he's in top five. Uh, this year, it seemed like it was the year of the, the young. I've seen a lot of our, our older guys get up around due to injuries or just production or, or lack thereof of production. Um, on the second list, I definitely have Jokic. Um, I, I had Luka before Jason, but I got Jokic, Luka, uh, Jason Tatum at three. Uh, and just letting the chips fall where they may at, at, at four and five. There's already that talk of the shape. Um, and then my five would be Embiid, only because of what he was in a role with early in the season prior to him getting injured. Um, he actually was given MVP numbers mm. on a day in day out basis. And it kind of sucked that he got hurt right before he became eligible. Uh, so any and all of any and all of his accolades, I'm pretty sure he was on first team in NBA. Um, he probably went defensive uh, for his team as well. Um, so I, I definitely would put him be like there, but he can interchange Shake. Um, even though he's almost won MVP, he should have won MVP. Um, I think a lot of people look at Shake like someone who got it out the mud. So they just pin him as this year as, as a most improved player, but he's been doing it for like two, three years now. Yeah. So he just didn't have all the pieces we have around him right now. And then the health season, I mean, the healthy uh, check, I mean, he always sees this too. Uh, but I will interchange him out with Anthony Edwards. I'm going to leave it on to Anthony Edwards because uh, Anthony Edwards, is, 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 we're coming to find out if there's three or four, um, given like a good. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's going to be scary to see how well he continues to excel and, and get better each year and what can come out of the West. Um, my favorite player is KD. Okay. But to watch how he manhandled KD that series, um, and it wasn't even like, you know, the, the whole, yeah, we got, you know, Jaden McDaniels, yeah, that was a comment, but he actually, like, showed you that. Yeah, you can have KD, you can have Bradley Bill, you can have Devin Booker, but I got a guy too. I got some guys, and they and they much better. Um, and I think Anthony Edwards has done enough, as well as Shea, the interchange really be in that fourth spot. But I think with him being getting hurt, I I keep that spot. Always getting hurt, I keep that spot. There's a there's a lot of people. It's funny that you just said that, but like a lot of people on my platform, man, they they well not a lot. Some people on my a crowd of like three to five 
or trying to push Ant top five. I just can't get with it. Um, I respect him. I love him as a player. I think he's not even top ten. Like, overall, I think he's not even top ten. I think he's right on the outside of being top ten. I have him, like, 11, 12 right now. Um, but, I mean, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Like, yeah, he's going to be everything that he wants to be uh, because he's just that good of a player, you know. Um, and you said the Michael Jordan thing. You know, people are saying that, too. So, I mean... I can't wait, man. I can't wait for Thursday because I get to see my favorite player in the NBA Finals again. Um, I haven't seen my favorite player in the Finals since Devin Booker, but I have seen my team in the Finals last year. I'm um, ultimately lost to the Denver Nuggets, so it is what it is. Um, thank y'all. Thank y'all for that quick NBA talks. Um, one more thing, though, before we get to WNBA. Uh, what do y'all think went wrong for Minnesota in that last series to lose 4-1? Like, what, what went wrong for them in that last series? It was it was a couple things that oh Kenneth go ahead. I was going to say it was a couple things. Um, I would say youth and experience for sure. Um, the Mavs had Kyrie, Jason Kidd, just, just those two alone. They've had the experience to get to the finals and win it. Um, so coaching was was the first. Um, I would say, honestly, truthfully speaking, they were tired. Um, I think I was watching something on YouTube recently and KG had broke it down and it actually made sense. He was saying, but these players that are playing that got this far in the younger teams are used to being in Cancun right now. They're not used to playing basketball, used to working out. Not They're not used to playing right now, so their body is, is in condition to get to this point. It kind of made sense, but then when you look at it, the, the, the Nuggets, I mean, I'm sorry, the, um, you're not, the Nuggets and the Timberwolves played the game seven. And then two days later, they hopped into the, the series with the Mavericks. And then it was like they never had a chance to fully recover. Um, and I think mentally, if you look at every game, they had they had the Mavericks. They had them. But they just had a possession or two where they turned the ball over and they just mm-hmm. messed up. And so it was like, was that a mental error? Was that a fatigue error? Was it both? You know, what what, what really what really happened on this? Um, and then Carl Anthony Towns, I, I've never been a fan of him. Um, and I just feel like he, he didn't show up this series. And I think that's what really ultimately went right wrong for him. He had one game where he showed he could do something. And, he had, mm-hmm. um, and then the last game, Rudy taking seven shots in the first quarter. Like, what were you thinking? Um, so it, they just wanted to go home and get it over with. They were already home. It, it stayed in the flight. They didn't have to go back to Dallas and then fly back home. They could just go back home and the rest of the night their family. So I think that's what went wrong. In that Minnesota series, at uh, the addition for them not being able to be conditioned to play that long, uh, okay. Uh, what you got to say, Stephanie, about it? I think it was a couple things. Um, I think, for one, I would have liked to see Anthony Edwards be a little bit bit more dominant in that series, which I can understand after you know seeing how he was against Phoenix, seeing how he was against Denver. It was all eyes on him. It was all focused on him. So, you know, when he's coming off these screens, coming off these picks, they're double teaming him. They're picking him up early. They're, you know, crowding so he can't get into the paint. So I understand that, you know, at this point, you know, it's it's nothing easy for him. But I would have liked to see him be a little more dominant because that's what the Timberwolves need. I think in a lot of the games when they were playing the Mavericks, he didn't really start heating up until the second half. And that's kind of too late. Like you have to like he has to be on it for the tip, like when the ball gets tipped. So I would have liked to see him be a little bit more dominant. I think that's going to come because now, you know, he's introduced us as the new face of the league. So I think now that he knows that and he knows that people are going to be coming for him and teams are going to be strategizing for him, he's going to find different ways that he can score and be more effective. Um, So I would have liked to see him be more dominant. Um, I agree with Kenneth's point about Carl Anthony Towns and that he just didn't show up. Um, And I think he has the ability to. I do. I think it was maybe, was it game four? When he showed out when they won their the Timberwolves won their one lone game in that series. Yeah. Um, but I think he just has to show up. He has to. Because we're not gonna get that production. We're not gonna get the type of production that we can expect from him from somebody like Rudy Gobert. Um, I think we can expect maybe a fraction of that or half of that production from Nas Reed, because he's been putting in some great minutes and was doing some great things. But Carl Anthony Towns has to be that player that he says he is. He has to be that every game. Like, he has to be that if the Timberwolves want to win. Um, and then lastly, I think the defense. I think the Timberwolves show, sh- showed in the series against Denver 
that they can play defense and stop any team in the NBA. I mean, the butt whoopings that they laid on Denver, I mean, they, they showed that their defense is nothing to be played with. And then when they got to the Mavericks, Kyrie was just – what barbecue chicken, oxtails, mac and cheese, collard greens. He was just, he was having his way like a Sunday dinner. He was having his way. So obviously you're not going to hold somebody like Kyrie to five points or 10 points. You know, you know, host a superstar of that caliber, but you have to contain them. You're not going to hold a Luca. You know what I'm saying? If it's, if it's a superstar, we already know they're going to go off for a certain, certain number of points, clutch shots, made baskets, and ones, three. We, we know that. But you have to contain them if you want to win the game. You can't just let them go off shooting 30-footers. And you, you, just can't, you just can't let those things happen. And if you were able to put the pressure on the Denver Nuggets, you got to apply that same pressure to the Mavericks. Because when you have Kyrie and Luka doing those things, it's, it's nothing you can do. It's nothing you can do. Yeah. So I think the defense they have to they have to keep that same energy. Yeah, that's 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 the thing I took away with it. Um, and that series was a defense for me too. Um, also, they were, I think they were tired. I think Ant spoke about you know now training or knowing what it takes uh, to train his body to be able to play uh, deep into May, deep into June. So um, he said he'll be back. We'll see how that we'll see you know how that shakes out, but. Man, I mean, they they went they 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 defended Booker phenomenally. Bill, I think they played pretty good defense against KD as well. Pretty much took MPJ had a horrible series. Played good defense on Jamal and Jokic for the most part. Um, and Aaron Gordon, he wasn't too effective that much throughout that series in every game. Uh, and then you come against Dallas and Luke and Kyrie, excuse me, just explode. I mean, three out of the five games they both scored thirty. That that's wild to think about. It's only two ball handlers on that team. And three out of the five games, they both scored thirty. Um, they tried defensive. Def- they tried different defensive coverages against Luca, but I mean, he 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 showed why he's one of the best players in the NBA. Top two, some say one, some say top three, whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, man, uh, shout out to the Wolves. Shout out to their future. Uh, I think Cat definitely has to be better. You know, he played like number one draft pick. I think he was too up and down. Um, um, he was off from the outside. Rudy is not, you know, too effective off- offensively, but he was knocking out his free throws for the most part this postseason. Um, so shout out to him. Um, Mav Celtics, this Thursday, y'all. Make sure y'all stay tuned. Make sure y'all tap in. And if you're watching this episode, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we're going to take it to the last part of the show. Uh, we're going to touch bases inside of the WNBA. Uh, Stephanie uh, Largo High School uh, basketball, uh, college basketball. I know you're a pro. Yeah, L three. Yeah, yeah. L3. yeah. <laughs> and now you're and now you're a pro basketball player. Uh, so you you know what it's like as far as um, women's women's hoops. Um, question: We're gonna start this off with how do you feel about the WNBA right now? Um, and and then I want you to touch on the topics and and talks around Caitlin Clark. I'm just opening it out for you first. I'm gonna see how you attack it, and then I will ask things if I want you to go in a certain direction. Um, so how you feel about the WNBA or just women's hoops in general is going right now? I mean, what's your thoughts on this whole the Caitlin Clark um, thing since she's been drafted and and now? Um, well, the WNBA now, I think they're in a great space right now. We have new faces, new fans, new teams that are coming. I think they're in a great space right now. Um, I think that a lot of that is stemming from the college season where we really just saw an explosion of superstars also coupled with new NIL deals and brand deals and partnerships. So now you have the, that fan base from college now wanting to see these girls or these young ladies in the WNBA. Um, so I think the WNBA is in such a great space with the explosion of people watching, people tuning in, people talking about it. The conversations that are having that we people are having about the WNBA, I think it's in a great space. Um, I think the only downfall is that a lot of these new fans, um, they're not educated and they don't really watch so they may see a clip on overtime or bleach a report or see a caption or something and then go off that rather than actually watching entire games, watching players, you know, choosing a team that they want to follow, actually knowing what is actually going on. So when they're not educated on what's going on, then a lot of these false narratives and, you know, stereotypes and just bad information can get out there. And I think that that really hurts the league when you have information that's either, you know, inaccurate out of context or just straight up not true 
Um, so I think that's really the only downfall is that a lot of people are not taking the time out to actually watch the WNBA, actually educate yourself on some of these players, on what's happening with teams, on rivalries, on history, on context. I actually want to see people really get into that because then the conversations that we have can actually be good debates and fruitful rather than me just throwing out misinformation and throwing out bad takes and us talking about things like that. I really want to see people get into it so that we can have these conversations. Cause I love, I love debates. We should be talking about the WNBA and these new players. This rookie class is phenomenal. There, th th this entire rookie class, whether it's you're talking about Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Rakia Jackson, Cameron Brink, Nikki Mule, this, this rookie class is phenomenal. So I want us to be talking about it. These veterans are phenomenal. They're not they're not going anywhere either. So I want to have these conversations. So I'm really glad that we have a lot of new eyes and new faces that are on the league right now. Um, Go, go ahead. No, yeah, I agree um, with everything that you just said. A lot of people were saying, as far as the new eyes and impact, a lot that has to do with Caitlin Clark. How do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's true. Um, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Um, I think when you look at the numbers in terms of how much money she's brought into the league, how much attention she's brought into the league, that can't be disputed. And rightfully so. I mean, this girl has proven that she can shoot from the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? This girl has proved that she can score at will. So I think that in terms of the attention that the league is receiving because of her, I do think that she played a big role in that and that that is lifting up other players. But I also think that there's other players and other narratives that have also been helping the WBA grow for this, the past few years, not just this year. I think this this year has kind of been um, the tipping point, but the WBA has been growing tremendously in the last few years. And I also want to give kudos to the girls who are, or the ladies who have been showing eyes to the league. The Aces have been a really popular topic, a really popular team. The Asia Wilson, um, I want to give eyes to that as well. But Caitlin Clark, I, I do think that, like I said, num numbers don't lie. You have teams moving from maybe their uh, arena that they have to bigger arenas just to accompany when she comes into town, just to accompany all the fans that want to come and see her. Um, so I do think that her impact on the league is felt. It's significant. Well said. Uh well said. I think you broke that down phenomenally to a T for like the last four minutes. Um, Ken, if everything uh, that I asked her is right back, right, right to you. How are you feeling about uh, WNBA season, uh, Caitlin Clark, um, so far? Loving it. Loving it. I'm loving it. Um, so I, I, I love what I'm seeing out of, out of the ladies thus far. Um, I've been watching WNBA for quite some time now. Um, but I do want to say that while Caitlin Clark has garnered all this attention. Um, it's been something that has been fostered or the attention has been built up for so long. And I think she has just pushed it over, you know, and just made it overflow. Um, and the reason why I say that is because, you know, looking at um, people looking at Lisa Leslie, um, she's one of the greatest of all time. Um, looking at Maya Moore, she's one of the greatest of all time. Um, going back down to Candace Parker, the greatest is not number one WNBA player of all time to ever grace the floor. Um, and I believe that as we get into the, his, the, the history of the WNBA, we started looking at how teams once was before they, they fell apart. Um, as more teams get added on, the expansion. Um, I'm an HBCU grad, so I'm pretty ecstatic that the fact that they're adding more teams because now this opened up the opportunity and doors for our HBCU students to get on the court and showcase. I think uh, we had Two, eight, two or three HBCU girls um, get drafted or signed. Um, they got cut, but still they had the opportunity. I'm all about just getting an opportunity and you can see the opportunity and do what you need to do for, with it at that point. But I do think that now that we're getting more teams to the league, it's opening more doors and more avenues for more for, for more women. Um, but just going back to the point, I mean, Brittany Griner, she had a situation in Russia. The WNBA turned and helped her out and they got more sponsorships, more viewers, more more attributes for that. Um, talking about charter flights, um, you know, I was talking to Stephanie about this the other day, but a lot of people credit Caitlin Clark for that. That's something that's been in the works for three years because of the incident that happened on a regular flight with the WBA team. And I believe it was Brittany Bryant, if I'm not mistaken. They, they pulled their bag or, or said something to it that ended up disrespectful 
and then they ended up getting into a disagreement in the flight. They took the WNBA team off the flight. So it was like this 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 argument for charter flights has been a thing for so long. It took one person who come into the league with a lot of attention, a lot of notoriety, and someone who probably can, you know what I'm saying, have that influence and, and make it happen. Um, and now every every team that charter flights now. Um, and that's not to say that she's the reason, but you can say that she helped advance the movement. I think a lot of people give give Caitlin Clark too much credit. I'm not saying she's not a great player. She is a good player, great player, wonderful, wonderful uh, woman. But I think the Angel Reese's of the league, the ones who came from nothing or came from a background where, I'm not saying she came from nothing, but they came from something where they had to work and grind and they went from school to school where she was at Maryland. Um, and then she left Maryland to come to LSU and she got it her first year. And how everyone was, was dogging her in the media um, and talking bad about her in the media. If you look up any post, that no one say nothing negative about Kayla Clark. And that's the one thing that I think they, they try to put each other against, you know, put them against each other. Um, there's other players that happen to be in the draft that also contribute and that you can talk about in the media that do great things. Um, like Stephanie said, Cameron Burke, Sophia Jackson, um, Camilla Cardoza. I mean, look at how she came over and she's from Brazil. And she's making the way for now other Brazilian women who can pick up the sport now and play the game. Um, and now that's going to advance into another country. So let's not talk about how Caitlin Clark is savior of the WNBA because they never really needed a savior. I think she just added more eyes and more attention to them and more financial opportunities for the WNBA. Um, and, and my last point would be Brianna Stewart. I mean, when she first came to the league and she played with this with the Liberty. Um, and then, you know, just the different all the different women that have come into the WNBA and they've been on Caitlin Clark's level. Um, they just haven't had the attention or the media behind them backing them like she has. Hmm. But I do want to bring up the I do want to bring up uh, I don't know if you want to bring it up, but the show. If you if you ever want to talk about uh, if you want to bring up uh, the, the check the body check yesterday, oh, yeah. um, by Kennedy Carter. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of people have mixed emotions about that. It's part of it's it's part of it mixing emotion. You know what I'm saying? Emotions get high. Um. I didn't go get a chance to go back and rewatch it, but a lot of people are saying that she did it for no reason. In my humble opinion, I don't believe that that was for no reason. Um, she mouthed something to her as she did it, um, and I believe the play before when I when I did see it, Caitlin did do something towards her as well. Uh, so I do believe that when it's a high stakes game, motion there in a the way you get hot headed. Um, she just her, she just had an out of body experience or reaction to something that. Probably didn't end too well, um, but I think a lot of people are drawing it out of you know out of conclusion, out of, you know, doing too much about it. Um, I didn't take the fine, the flagrant, and keep it pushing. Yeah, it's hard for me to say. One, I didn't tweet about it. I watched that game in the, in the full. Um, shout out to Camilla. Um, she had a phenomenal debut yesterday to me. I think um, she didn't play. Obviously, she she was limited with minutes. Right, um, tough game, tough loss, uh, missed free throw towards the end of the game um, that helped uh, uh, Fever ultimately hold it out. Um, but I mean, to to the shove, I didn't speak on it. One Kennedy had a she she hooped yesterday. She had a phenomenal game, um, and I think Caitlin said something to her to play before she came back. She hit the mid range shot. She went up to her and bumped her, and she was, she was saying something to her when she did it. I, mean, I I don't have an issue with it. I mean, it's something feel like it's unnecessary. Something feel like she probably shouldn't have did it. Um, I mean, it's a physical sport. You know, basketball is a physical sport, whether that's men or women. So, I mean, it, it got a great to a flavor on one this morning. Um, I think on the court on the, during the game, they just called it like a um, a, a loose a, a loose ball foul, whatever. Uh, yeah, loose ball foul. Yeah. yeah, so she got a free throw for it. They upgraded to a flavor on one this morning. Um, a little unnecessary to me, but, I mean, it's not something I'm going to be like, oh, man, they can't be doing that to Caitlin Clark. You know, the only thing I don't like about it is, like, I think Aaliyah was right there, and Shorty real life ran up to Caitlyn, knocked her down, and Aaliyah just, just went about her way. Like, she just, like, she just, like, <laughs> she just kept walking. Like, she just went about her way. I'm like, damn, like, it's like nobody's, like, I need to see them, like, and again, this has got to be a team thing. I don't know how her teammates feel because, obviously, Caitlyn got a lot of attention, and they, they're on social media, and, like, Aaliyah said she had to deactivate her Twitter and all that because all the things that's being said about her, you know, um, 
missing layups or not playing up to par. Granted, the last three, four, five games, she's been, you know, picking up her play. Um, even yesterday, she had a good game. Wasn't that great from the field, but overall, um, she had a good game and literally had the, the and one bucket to help them get more comfortable winning that game um, over uh, Camilla. So, um, I don't feel no type of way about the foul, man, because a little, a little unnecessary, but I think Caitlin and also her team got to continue to stick up to other teams that try to be aggressive um, towards them. Um, and like you said, the other, not not you said, but the other day, I think it was a game before last, where you saw somebody getting into Caitlyn face, and Caitlyn went up and like bumped her and was talking and talking right back to her. We need more of that, and she's gonna need to do that more often than that. It's only ten games in; she got thirty more to go. Um, so, you know, now, buckle up. But see, but see, the thing is, like, it's the same exact thing happens to Angel Reese, and and two times on the back to back possessions. Yeah, uh, Mr. Thomas threw her to the ground twice. Did she did, did they call it flagrant on, on the list of Thomas? No, they she, ejected it. Yeah, she got ejected. Yeah, got ejected. But you know, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, but the media didn't harp on that. It was like, oh wow, you know, she got knocked down. Oh, she get knocked down, get back up, keep keep, keep fighting. Oh man, Caitlin Park get bumped down. Now everyone just a bounty on Caitlin Park. Why would they put a bounty on it? You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> If I could um just piggyback off of what Kenneth was saying, um, when you were talking about the charter flights, I completely agree. I'm very much an advocate of um giving people credit where credit is due, and of the the idea that anyone in this space of women's basketball, we're standing on the shoulders of people who paved the way, people who've been in the trenches fighting. For women's not just the WNBA but just women's sports in, ge in, ge in general for us to get the equality the uh, equity to get the same respect we're standing on the shoulders of people who have been in the trenches been fighting for these things so for people to attribute charter flights to one person that's the misinformation that I was talking about earlier charter flights were used last year during the playoffs I don't know if it was the entire playoffs or once you made it to a certain round, but in the playoffs, the um, once you got there, the teams were using charter flights to go to their away games. Um, I believe it was maybe last year or two years ago, the New York Liberty, their owner could afford for them to use charter flights. So he, so it was, a, I think it was one game that they used a charter flight and they ended up, you know, getting, getting fined by the league and the league said that they couldn't do that. But the owner was very much all for his team using charter flights and then helping the entire league get charter flights for every team. So this has been a topic of discussion. This has been something that's on the table. People have been advocating for this. Um, so to attribute the work that everybody does to one player, I'm definitely not for that. Um, in terms of the shove that happened, I think that for one, I don't understand why people are just so surprised that women's basketball is physical that we get in people's faces, that we talk trash, that we talk mess, that we that we push, that we shove, that we don't like. This is sports. Yeah. And not only this is sports, this is professional basketball. This is the best league in the world, probably one of the most exclusive leagues. So this is what happens in sports. So I think, you know, a lot of people who are just like, I can't believe they're acting this way, this and that. This is not the only, what, what happened? Ariel Powers and um, Jackie Young got into it a couple games ago. Yeah. Kayla had got into it with somebody else. Jackie Young got into it with somebody else a couple games. Like, this this, this goes on. This, was, this is competition. This is high-stakes competition. This is what happens. Emotions get flared, get heated. This is what happens. Um, so whether you're like, oh, she shouldn't have done that unintentional, intentional, whatever. It's like, okay, you get pushed, get up, dust your sodas off, and keep it moving. That's what it is. That's what sports is. So for people to be like, oh, my God, like like Kenneth said, a bounty, like, really? Like, this just happened to Angel Reese a couple games ago. What did she do? She got up, said, you know what? It is what it is. I got to get I, I got to get my strength up. It is what it is. Other players, it is what it is. You got it. This is this is what the WNBA is. This is what basketball is. And if you can't handle it, it it's it's not it's not for you it, it gets physical it gets you know it, it gets heated people get in each other's faces this is what this is what happens this is sports um and as someone who loves sports whether we're talking about basketball football this is what we want to see this is that competitive edge are we supposed to be braiding each other's hairs and having tea parties and gossiping about which boy we like like this is what competitive spirit is so for the people who are so put off by it i don't know what sports they was watching before but this is the w now so they need to get used to it
Well said. Um, both of y'all, I, I want to, I have one final question, um, but I want to thank y'all so much. Um, I'm enjoying myself and I enjoyed myself um, during this episode. And anytime y'all feel like y'all may want to come back on again or even join the daily show, uh, please feel free to do so. Um, Aces, I think they're four and two this year. Uh, they just picked up uh, Tiffany out of retirement. Uh, played for the Sun last year. They have yet to see Chelsea Gray in the lineup. Chelsea Gray in the lineup this year. Uh, so the offense is not what it could be. Um, Asia mm-hmm. is having a phenomenal season to the to start to the season. Though. Asia Wilson is Asia Wilson. Um, let's not let's get that understood. Um, Liberty um, five and two, I think it is. Don't know off the top of my head right now. Um, Five and two. Yeah, five and two. Six and, six, oh, six. six and two. Okay, six and two. They're playing a fever in a couple of hours, so I'm definitely going to tap into that. Two of my favorite players, um, Caden Clark and Sabrina. Also, like Ryan Howard. I think she's playing right now. Can't I'm about to tap into that game in a second. Um, or they play at three today. Hold on, let me see if they're playing right now. Give me one second. Yeah, they're playing right now, and they're losing to the Sun right now. Um, the Sun, I was going to bring up them too. They're seven and zero right now. Um, they're about to be eight and zero. Um, are y'all expecting a finals rematch this year? Is my last question. Are y'all expecting a finals rematch from last year? Or you got two different teams making? Like, what, what, how y'all feeling about the finals this year for WNBA? I know it's early, but it's early finals prediction. Um, am I expecting a finals rematch? I don't know if I'm expecting it, but I wouldn't be surprised if we had the same finals rematch from last year. But I think this year we're having a couple other teams who are kind of pushing their way into the conversation. Um, like you said, Connecticut being undefeated, they have a great they have a great roster. Like they 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 have a great team and they play really great, yeah. hard nosed, tough team basketball. Yeah. Um so I think they're they're pushing their way into that like you said, it's early. Yeah. Um but they're pushing their way into that conversation. Um I think Minnesota has also been playing very well. Yeah. Um, they're sitting at five and two right now. They've been playing very well as um, also. So I think they're pushing their way into the conversation. I have Phoenix as a sleeper team. Um, they've been struggling a little, uh, struggling a little bit. Um, I think they've been struggling because they kind of have a new team. They have the addition of Kalia Copper, um, Natasha Cloud. Yeah. So they have a kind of a different team than they did last year. Um, but after seeing. Um, the way Kalia Copper has been playing in these last few games, the roster, that's just looking at the roster that they have and the players that they have. I think once they can kind of get them, like get that chemistry together, I think they'll kind of push their way into the conversation. I wouldn't be surprised if they went on a three or four game winning streak, five game winning streak. Um, So do I expect the finals, finals rematch? No, I wouldn't be surprised though. I mean, look at the teams, the two teams we're talking about. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but I think it's a couple teams who are going to kind of push their way into that conversation. How you feeling about it, Kenneth? I agree with Stephanie. Um, I think she's looking at my notes prior to the call. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I agree with her, everything she said, but I, I wouldn't be surprised um, as the season goes on, we see uh, Phoenix come out and, and maybe overtake the Aces. The reason I'm saying is because right now the injury bug has already hit the aces. Um, but then you also look at the production of Chelsea Plum. Um, I haven't been too high on her numbers this season so far. Um, I think she's been more taking the back seat and letting Asia be Asia. Um, this is her team. But I think right now she's still trying to figure out, you know, what what's her overall putting going to be for the team going forward this year. Um, and then with the addition of like Stephanie said, the Peaks in the Phoenix, I mean, the dogs. Like, they're going to start, they're going to pick it up soon. Um, and I think right now that St. Louis New York is having, um, they're still trying to figure out how to bounce back from last year. I mean, the, the tremendous run that they had last year, too. Um, so I should say that technically, I wouldn't expect it, but if it happens, uh, it happens. Um, yeah. And it's something that I think we might see for like another year, it would take. Um, because of how well the, 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 the women are playing, um, the coaching as well. I think once you look at, once you look past the players and look at the coaches and how they use their players, I mean, this is, this is with NBA as well. I mean, going back to Jason Kidd, how he subs out Luca and Kyrie at certain times in the game, I think it's all about tactics. Um, I was talking to Stephanie yesterday, we was watching uh, the Fever in the Sky game, 
and it's like it feels like they're they're forced to play Caitlyn all all game without mm-hmm. no breaks, and it's like that's bad for player production, but also for efficiency and getting better. Um, and so I think right now for Aces Liberty, um, they're two they're two teams to beat respectively, but um, Connecticut Phoenix, it might just be the sleeper team. Okay. Uh, I like it. I actually have a different sleeper, though. Um, I do expect, personally, I would expect a final rematch this year. Um, as far as a sleeper, though, I'm I'm looking at um, the Storm. You know, slow start to the season. I still think Jewel Lloyd is not playing her best basketball as of yet. We all know who she is as a scorer, 20-plus a night. Um, but her efficiency is not there uh, right now. Uh, Four-game winning streak for them. Um, Skyler, she she returned this year. She's playing. Uh, Neneka, um they have they have some some things going on in there. And I think it's all about the cohesiveness and the chemistry. And as long as that upticks, I think they they will continue to trend upward. So that's actually my sleeper team. Um, and obviously respect to the Sun. Um, I like how they defend Liberty personally. Um, I watched the whole entire series last year. I loved it. Uh, but I, if I had to like just say it for right now, my early my early early obviously prediction um, would be Liberty. Versus Aces uh, Part Two, uh, but I can't wait for. It. Hopefully, Stewie is shooting better from the field. Um, can't really say much about how far the Liberty defending the Aces because they really only have one real lady or a one real POA POA defender in um, Laney. So, um, you know, you can expect Jackie and Chelsea to still have their way against Van Sloot and Sabrina, and y'all know what I'm saying. So, um, I'm hoping for that rematch uh, personally. Uh, can't wait to see it. Uh, thank y'all so much for joining Facts and Stats episode 104 today. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I enjoy myself completely with you all. Um, did y'all have any final things to say before we get up out of here? Um, no, I just respect you, bro. Like, you're doing your thing. Um, it was good to be here. Um, definitely some good quotes, uh, going questions, uh, good, good information. I'm definitely be talking this more often. Yes, sir. Thank you, my brother. What about you, Stephanie? Um, thank you for having us. Um, I want everybody to tune into these WNBA games. Um, the finals preview, I think it's going to be a really great series between the Mavericks and the Celtics. Um, but thank you for having us on. I enjoyed the conversation. Yes, sir. Thank y'all oh, yeah. so much. Uh, shout, out, shout out Ashley for getting us. Uh, yeah, yes, big, big, shout big shout out to Ashley. Big shout out to Ashley. Shout she out set Ashley. this all up. She set this up on the fly, sure. too. Uh, so thank you, Ashley. Um, and thank y'all again for joining. I, I enjoyed myself.